He's pretty handsome. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvit, and today I'm going to be playing a game called Insomnia's Window. A game where our older boyfriend helps us get to sleep. Hopefully no shenanigans occur. <gasps> dolphins! That is a adorable dolphins. An exasperated sigh slips from your lips as you trudge through your front door, tossing your keys into the dish nearest the door. Today has been yet another day full of exhaustion and irritation from one of your co-workers, and you were pretty darn tired. Being a receptionist isn't difficult, but that doesn't make it easy. On top of that, your sleeping schedule has suffered quite a beating, making it so you barely got around four hours. Oh, that's terrible. And this was on a good day. Oh, oh, that's horrible. Oh, jeez. Another wave of fatigue washes over you as you gaze out of your window, sighing yet again. The sun is already beginning to set, and you'd only just gotten home minutes ago. It was honestly a shame how overworked you were. You can't even remember the last time you had an actual vacation. This had to be illegal somewhere. Oh, I feel for this person. At least the sunset is pretty. That is a nice sunset there. That is very pretty. Living in the city was hard, but at least you were able to enjoy a great view of the various skyscrapers in the clouds. The beautiful pixelated clouds. Your modest apartment included a large window, perfect for gazing out of. And sighing, wistfully, like you were in a dramatic music video or something. <laughs> As your eyes follow along with a flock of birds, they eventually flit over to your bag, and your name tag sticking out of it. You absentmindedly reach over and grab it, fiddling around with the name tag in contemplation. You've considered quitting before, more times than you can even begin to count, actually. As much as you would like to, being unemployed would put you in an even tougher spot. Knowing this doesn't make you feel any better, though. The hard plastic of your name tag is still cold in your hands. What does your name tag say? It says Espoir. Yep, that's what it says. Espoir, the corporate slave, it certainly has a ring to it, huh? <laughs> Self-pitying thoughts aside, you figure it would be best to have a nice warm shower. Maybe that would help you sleep better. It's worth a shot, anyway. Oh, that sounds lovely, too. The water was nice and warm. Ooh, that's so pretty. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous right there. Gorgeous. By the time you're done with your shower, you quickly note that it only managed to wake you up even more. Aww. Now, the sun has set completely, and the stars have come out to play. You decide to scroll through social media for a little to see if liking art or laughing at memes would tire you out. Haha, <laughs> I know from experience that it doesn't! <laughs> you save some memes and share some art, but you still aren't sleepy. Where did all that fatigue you were feeling when you got home go? After swapping back and forth between the same three social media apps, it was obvious that it wasn't going to make you sleep. You can't help but eye the time at the corner of your phone with a sigh for the umpteenth time. It was just getting later and later. Wait, did I log in today? Maybe suffering from insomnia had its merits. You almost forgot to log into your games and do your dailies. <laughs> Oh, jeez. That'll just keep you up even more. It didn't take you long, though, and afterwards you were still wide awake. There was no possible way you would be able to get some adequate rest at the pace you were going. As far as you're concerned, you see two choices before you. One, lay in bed and stare at the ceiling until you have to suffer all over again at work. Or, two, text your boyfriend to see if he's up for a late night chat. Te text the boyfriend. Text the boyfriend. I choose that. If I have a choice, I choose that. As a dean, there was a chance that he was still awake, right? Seeing as how his job kept him even busier than yours. You feel a small pang of guilt in your chest as you thought about it for a moment, though. Maybe he would prefer to rest if he is awake. 
Then again, it's been a while since you were able to actually have a full conversation with him. Much longer than you would prefer. In the end, your desire to talk with Lucas wins. You decide to text him. Hey, are you busy? I just got off of work. Oh good, I thought he'd be home by now. Why? Is something wrong? Oh no, I just couldn't sleep is all and wanted to see if you were up to talk for a bit. I see. I'm sorry you can't sleep, dear. My school is fairly close to your place. I could stop by and keep you company. Really? That sounds great. Thanks, Luke. Of course. I'll be there soon, love. No need to unlock the door, by the way. I have my key with me. Oh, perfect. Because I don't really feel like getting up. Lol. You wince internally for a moment, but soon figured a common slang like lol wouldn't be too foreign for the older man. You don't mind it one bit, but it is still pretty funny when he asks you what a slang word means. And pretty cute. Out of consideration, you decided to start texting in full sentences with proper spelling, just so he wouldn't have to try so hard to decipher what you meant to say. The thought of him alone was enough to bring a genuine smile to your face, making you momentarily forget about your job woes and other problems. You're glad you decided to text him after all. Ah, oh, I can't wait to see him. No. Oh. After locking your phone and putting it on charge, all you could do was gaze out of the window and wait for your boyfriend. Your boyfriend's arrival is signified by the sound of a key being inserted into your door, followed by the door opening and then closing. Lucas comes in to find you gazing out of your window, elbows resting on the windowsill and sighing. <sighs> it's blatantly clear that you're exhausted, yet sleep is still evading you. A frown makes its way onto your face before he can help it. Seeing the person you love looking so downtrodden isn't a good feeling and greeting you with such a negative expression on his face would only exasperate your assumed already sour mood. Instead, he greets you with a smile and a bag of sweets. <gasps> oh, you shouldn't have. You're speaking my language. A bag of sweets. <laughs> Lucas sets it down on the windowsill, right next to the teddy bear he gave you from your last anniversary. There's a sweet smell emitting from the bag, which piques your curiosity as you direct your questioning gaze toward your boyfriend. What's in the bag? What's in the bag? Can I eat it? <laughs> Actually, no, you probably shouldn't eat sweets before you go to bed. That's a, that's a bad idea. Do not eat sweets before you go to bed. It smells good. What's in it? Holy cow. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Sir. He's pretty handsome. <clears throat> I wasn't sure there would be any shops open this late, but I'm glad there were. He shakes the bag a little, careful not to jostle its contents too much. They're macarons, but you can't eat them tonight, okay? The sugar will keep you up. <laughs> You're going to be keeping me awake anyway. What's one little macaron gonna hurt? Lucas's easygoing smile remains as he shakes his head. I came over to help you sleep, love, not stay awake. Ah, yeah, yeah, you're right. Honestly, I wasn't going to text you because I thought that maybe I'd be bothering you, or you were already at home enjoying your night. You laugh in a somewhat self-deprecating manner. I was selfish, though, and I just really wanted to see you. Oh, Espoir, you should never feel any guilt or think you're being selfish where I'm concerned. Even if I was at my house, I would never leave you to deal with your problems alone. Especially if I can help it. Hmm, I know. I just don't like being a burden, you know? Nonsense. Why would I be burdened from taking care of the woman I love? Besides, it would actually make me even happier if you relied on me a bit more. I know you have a tendency to take everything on yourself, and I certainly do admire that about you. But please, remember that it's perfectly fine to rely on others, especially if they're already unwilling to offer a helping hand. S sorry that was kind of thoughtless of me to say, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Luke. It's no problem at all. 
That reminds me, though. Have you been sleeping poorly for a while now, then? Hmm, I've been having some issues at work, but it's nothing to fret over. Lucas appears to be somewhat doubtful, but he moves the conversation right along anyway. Well, I did say I would help you sleep, so that's what I aim to do. I can either tell you a story, or we can just chat. <gasps> if I could choose, I want a story. I like stories. I like stories. That's why I play these games, because I like stories. So, which would you prefer, my dear? <gasps> a story, hmm? I'd be happy to. This is the story about a young duck that longs to become a pastry chef and build his own bakery from scratch. However, his parents want him to be a dentist or a doctor instead of chasing after a dream that may or may not come true. Oh, a little macaron duck. In order to help his dream come to fruition, the young duck did his best to raise money for the construction of his future bakery. It wasn't long before his parents found out, though, and they proceeded to heavily discourage the young duck in order to convince him to use the money to fund his college studies. They don't understand me at all, but I'll show them that I can do it, the young duck told himself. Regardless of his enthusiasm or motivation, his parents still refused to support his dream. Instead, they began applying him to various colleges in hopes that he would be accepted and possibly forget about becoming a pastry chef. Unfortunately, their thoughtless actions only managed to push their child further and further away. The young duck ended up running away from home with nothing but his savings to live off of. Shockingly enough, he wasn't discouraged in the slightest. If anything, he saw this as his chance to finally be free and pursue his goal with even more fervor. He took on odd jobs here and there, living out of a small, dirty pond by himself all the while. The young duck persevered day by day until he was able to take on a small job working as a janitor for a bakery. Finally, he was at least one step closer to his dream. One day, when one of the bakers didn't come in for work, causing the bakery to be short on staff, they had no choice but to ask the young duck if he had any experience with baking. Even though he was burning with joy on the inside, he answered with a meek, Yes. It was then that the young duck's talent for baking was discovered, and he soon was offered a full-time position as a baker. The young duck saved up his earnings until he was finally able to build his own bakery and start his lifelong dream of being a professional baker. His parents even came to his bakery and congratulated him on his success, stating that they were happy for their son. Even though he would have preferred their support from the start, the young duck had no ill feelings towards his parents. And the young duck lived happily ever after, serving delicious pastries to his customers every day. Although, there was still something nagging at him. He felt unfulfilled, like an unexplored part of him lay dormant, yet he wasn't sure what it was. And the end. <laughs> Wait. That's the end? You say, outraged and trying to fight back a yawn, yet failing miserably. You can't just leave it like that, Luke. What happens to the duck next? And why does he feel unfulfilled when his lifelong dream came true? And his parents even approved. What could the young duck possibly be missing? You rapid-fire question after question at your boyfriend, who is simply grinning at you, as if he didn't just drop the biggest cliffhanger on you just now. <laughs> Hmm, I wonder as well. Is it love? Is the answer love? Because the, the duck didn't find a companion to bake for, and so he felt, felt unfulfilled. Is, th is that the answer, Luke? Is that what you're getting at? What do you think? Your boyfriend turns the question back on you, prompting your sleepy brain to try and formulate a likely theory. Hmm, maybe once he accomplished what he wanted, he felt unsatisfied with it for some reason. Like there was something more for him to do instead of making pastries. I don't know. I see. That's an interesting theory indeed, my dear. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with me, but I do believe it's time for you to sleep now, don't you think? Your pout deepens as you feel another yawn bubbling up in your throat. But I'm not sleepy. You whine in protest, but you can already tell you're fighting a losing battle. 
You yawned at least seven times throughout my entire story, dear. Okay, maybe I feel a little sleepy then. Lucas laughs, seemingly happy with your conceding. That's a good girl. I'll lock up for you when I leave, seeing as how we both have work tomorrow. Groggily, you thank him as he tucks you into bed. Thanks, Luke. I love you. I love you too, Espoir. I hope you have sweet dreams. Oh, what a good boyfriend. Your boyfriend's bedtime story did wonders. You can already feel yourself drifting. Even though the story is still on your mind, you end up convincing yourself that it was just a story and pass out. It was more than that, wasn't it? It was more than just a story. That was beautiful. That was lovely. I love that. That was so wholesome and lovely. I love it so much. Cuddling will be for last. <laughs> Let's talk. You'd like to talk? <laughs> That's fine with me. Although, I'm a little unsure of what to talk about. Ah, would you like to vent about your issues at work, dear? I'm happy to hear you out, and possibly offer some advice if I can. Ah, <sighs> well, it's nothing major. I've just been having issues with one guy that won't take no for an answer. Uh-oh. <laughs> the way the smile faded from his face, like, what? What was that, darling? He continues trying to ask me out for lunch, even though I've told him over and over again that I'm taken. He insists that it's just as friends, when I know that's definitely not the case. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Lucas. Lucas, calm down. Lucas is now the one who's going to have to produce the hands. Lucas's expression visibly darkens as he quietly listens to you vent about your frustrations. Have I met this person before? You shake your head no in response to his question. No, he's a rather new hire, so you wouldn't have met him before. Seeing as how Lucas has met all of your co-workers, his question certainly made sense. Surely he would have noticed if one of your co-workers was a little too friendly. Turns out he's never met the guy. Which is probably for the best. <laughs> if this man is making unwanted advances, you should report him to HR in reference to harassment, Espoir. Ah, <laughs> unfortunately, I've tried that, but HR claims that he hasn't done anything inappropriate yet. So there's no need to intervene or write him up for it. <laughs> should I come to your job one day on your lunch break and have a chat with a boy? Lucas is like, I just want to talk. I just want to talk. I just want to talk. <laughs> if he was trying to hide the actual intent behind his words, he definitely wasn't doing a good job of it. <laughs> Calm down, Luke. You could easily read between the lines. <laughs> if by talk you mean intimidate. Not at all, dear. I would just tell him that you're taken. And I don't appreciate another man asking my girlfriend out for anything. Whether it be lunch, brunch, coffee, or even a measly little snack. You can hardly help the smile that spreads across your face at his words, though it's not like you would want to anyway. You feel fortunate to have a boyfriend that cares so much for your well-being and comfort. It's definitely an upgrade from your past relationships. Thank you for caring, Luke. Don't worry, if it escalates, HR won't have a choice. He could end up fired, too. As persistent as he is, I'm sure the threat of being fired would win over that intensity. That's probably for the best. I wouldn't want to cause you any trouble on your job. Still, I worry about you, Espoir. A teasing grin makes its way onto your face. I'm an adult, Luke. I can handle it. That is true. I remember how no-nonsense you were when you came to visit me at my college, and some of the female students were crowding around me. You shooed them off with such a cute little pout on your face. Did he really have to bring that up again? God, and now you're blushing just remembering it. Aww. Well, well I just didn't like how close they were to you as all. It was completely unprofessional and an invasion of personal space. Really, people should learn to respect others better. <clears throat> <laughs> sure, Espoir. I agree. I feel the same way knowing there's been someone harassing you at work. You give a small nod of affirmation, accompanied by another yawn. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. 
then I think you should come by for lunch sometime. If your busy schedule allows it. <laughs> if it's for you, I'll make time. There he goes, making you blush again, as if you're a newlywed couple or something. Aww. As soon as you open your mouth to respond, you're cut off by a relatively loud yawn. Lucas hides a chuckle behind his hand as he watches you. I think it's time for you to sleep now, little one. You want to protest, but all that comes out is a yawn. <laughs> Aww. I'm not even tired, though. You just yawned two times in a row, Espoir. Okay, maybe I feel a little tired then. As I thought, silly girl. I'll lock up for you when I leave, seeing as how we both have work tomorrow. Groggily, you thank him as he tucks you into bed. Thanks, Luke. I love you. I love you too, Espoir. I hope you have sweet dreams. Oh. For once, in the last couple of weeks, you are able to get a fair amount of rest. You pass out, thinking of what you should have for lunch tomorrow. Oh. It's cuddle time! You want to cuddle with me? Right now? Espoir, that's adorable. His soft, sincere tone makes your cheeks burn. Oh. Even though you are blushing, most of the warmth you feel comes from Lucas as he slips into bed beside you after removing his glasses and necktie. Well, it's just that it's been a while since we last cuddled, and I've kind of missed that. You aren't exactly sure why you're feeling so bashful all of a sudden. I agree. We've both been so busy, so it's not that surprising. It is disappointing, though. Fortunately, I have tomorrow off, so I can spend the night and cook breakfast for you in the morning. Well, assuming I'm not called in to collect papers or something or other, I could bring you lunch as well. Oh, I agree. That sounds great. Eating lunch with you will keep away any unwanted pests. <laughs> hmm? What do you mean by that, dear? N nothing! <laughs> Awkward laughter disregarded, you take his hands in yours and fold them in front of your body in a tight hug. Lucas hums happily as he buries his nose into your hair, getting comfortable as the big spoon. Trademark. <laughs> you didn't get to cuddle with Lucas often, but when you got to, it was never a disappointing experience. Have you changed your shampoo, Espoir? Your hair smells delightful, even more than usual. Hmm, I wanted to try something new. I approve. It suits you well. <gasps> Thank you, Luke. You can barely suppress the second yawn that comes tumbling out of your mouth. You're warm and content. <laughs> Are you comfortable, love? I am. Very. Comfortable enough to sleep? Mm-hmm. I am. Good. It worried me, you know, to hear that you hadn't been getting good rest lately. Had I known, I would have done something to help a lot sooner. You're helping now, Luke, and that's all that matters. I had my doubts at first, but I'm glad I was able to help, if only even a little. I'm yawning, aren't I? That means I'm sleepy, right? I definitely wasn't until you came over, so thank you again, Luke. You're more than welcome, dear. If there's anything I can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Again, if it's within my power, I don't mind at all. I'll try to keep that in mind. You know, so I don't trick myself into thinking I'm bothering you again. Lucas gives you a light squeeze, holding you closer to his chest. Good, good, it's progress. I have faith that you'll be able to get used to relying on me more. <laughs> and I hope I can decrease your worries as well. Because I can easily say that you do the same for me. Really? Mm-hmm. Really. <laughs> that makes me happy, then. Though he says nothing at first, you feel him kiss your head in agreement. There's a moment of silence, only broken by Lucas murmuring something you can't quite make out. Before you can think to ask him what he said, 
you're drifting off to sleep. In your boyfriend's arms, completely encompassed by his warmth and love. That's so beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Sweet dreams, Espoir. Oh. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, that was absolutely beautiful. Oh. Oh, it was so lovely. And now I'm actually yawning. Oh, so lovely. Oh. Hello. Hello, he may be. Hello there. Be here. I just want to thank you again for playing my game. You're very welcome. Seriously, it means a lot to me that you made it this far. This short game took me a few weeks to make, and even though I struggled at times, or just straight up procrastinated, I fully feel you. I fully understand. I really did enjoy the process. I'm thinking of probably turning this into a series where the main character is comfortable by their boyfriend in different scenarios with a different man each time. Oh, that would be lovely! Please don't hesitate to leave a comment on the game page and let me know what you think. All feedback is appreciated. Big kisses to you, Espoir. You're the real MVP. <gasps> Thank you! After story. Ooh! Notice the after story gets a little suggestive towards the end, after the time skip. <clears throat> so please, be mindful of that. What's this about the Lucas? Oh! 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 Hamsters! Hamsters with little chubby cheeks. They're the hamsters. Oh! Let's see, name Lucas Clare. Birthday, February 3rd. Age 42. He looks good for his age. Occupation, Dean, very nice, likes pastries, jazz music, animals, and spoiling his lover. <gasps> Dislikes, plagiarism, getting sick, and losing his glasses. Oh. Hobbies, writing, baking, jogging, DIY, and his personality type is INFJ. I forget what that means. Was he the duck? Was the story about the duck about him? Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night. And remember, there is always hope. And I hope you have a lovely rest and a glorious sleep.